Okay. Today, I want to introduce everybody to a crucial concept, and that is satiety per calorie. So what exactly is satiety per calorie? Well, humans, like all animals, eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full. And this natural mechanism is just how our bodies have always regulated food intake. Now, let's compare two radically different categories of people. On one hand, we have people who are overfat and insulin resistant. And on the other hand, we're gonna look at people who are lean and insulin sensitive. Now, I don't care how many calories anybody eats because if you're super active, you need a ton of calories, that's awesome. But exceeding calorie balance, that is consuming more calories than you need, is definitely a real phenomenon. And the clear difference between these two groups is that the lean person is in calorie balance and the overfat and insulin resistant person is not in calorie balance. So consuming an oversupply of calories leads to gradual fat gain. And eventually when you start to run out of good places to store fat, you can develop insulin resistance. And of course, insulin resistance is associated with almost all of our chronic diseases. Now, on the other hand, maintaining calorie balance keeps you very lean and insulin sensitive with a lower risk for chronic disease. So if a major difference between these two groups, the lean and insulin sensitive person versus the overfat and insulin resistant person is calorie balance. And because we're all eating to satiety, then by definition, a crucial factor distinguishing between these two groups must be satiety per calorie or how full they felt for the number of storable energy calories that they consumed. If you're eating more calories for the same satiety, you risk fat gain. If you're eating fewer calories for the same satiety, you will have weight maintenance, or if you're already over fat, weight loss. So satiety per calorie, or the number of calories needed to achieve fullness and stop eating, emerges as one of the larger factors at differentiating individuals with proper energy balance and optimal body composition and metabolic health from people with less favorable outcomes of over fatness and insulin resistance. While it really doesn't matter how many absolute calories people are eating on an individual level, staying in caloric or energy balance is definitely a big deal. And what is the single most significant determinant of caloric consumption on an ad lib diet or a diet where you're simply eating to satiety? That is food choice. Food choice is huge or more accurately, food availability and the foods available to you in your food environment. We have extensive human and animal research demonstrating that the amount of calories consumed directly correlates with the types of food eaten. And in other words, what you eat determines to a large degree how much you're going to eat. There are certain evidence-based factors that make any animal, such as a human, because we're animals, consume more or less of a given food as that animal eats to satiety. One of the biggest factors is protein percentage. Protein percentage is a major player. The higher the protein content of any food, the less an animal tends to consume because protein offers higher satiety, but provides significantly fewer energy calories than other macronutrients. Another major factor is fiber. Fiber is satiating out of proportion to the amount of metabolizable energy it contains. Fiber gives you bulk and volume and mass for very few calories, which dramatically raises satiety per calorie. Another factor is water and energy density. Grapes, for example, offer higher satiety per calorie compared to raisins, which are dehydrated and have a much higher energy density or calories per gram. So protein, fiber, and water are all components that reliably improve the satiety of the food compared to the caloric content or the satiety per calorie. Now, what factors negatively impact satiety per calorie? Well, refined energy dense sources of non-protein energy calories like refined carbs, sugar and flour, refined fats, oil and butter, and alcohol, which is just pure refined caloric energy. These things tend to add a ton of energy calories, but less satiety along with those calories or lower satiety per calorie. 
And there's another huge negative factor, which is hedonic factor. The hedonic factor or tastiness or hyperpalatability of foods. This is especially seen within a high energy density fat and a high energy density carb are combined together, like donuts or pizza or cookies or candy bars. There's also an increase in hedonic factor when salt is added to a high energy density food. Picture eating roasted and salted nuts versus unsalted nuts, for example. These also worsen satiety per calorie by causing a craving for eating, which is negative satiety. And yet these foods are nearly as high as possible in calories. So it's no surprise that the satiety per calorie of these foods with these factors is significantly lower. Let's talk about this awesome thing I've been working on with Dr. Andrea Seinfeld, which is the Hava app. Now the Hava app is all about satiety per calorie. The app considers all of these satiety per calorie elements that we've been talking about, protein, fiber, energy density, hedonic qualities, and it calculates a satiety score for foods on a scale from zero to 100. A score of 100 might represent something like celery, which is high in water and fiber, but low in net carbohydrates. Whereas on the other hand, a cookie could score a zero, representing this mix of sugar, butter, and flour, energy dense combination of carbs and fats that's very low in satiety. The goal of the Hob app is to score somewhere in the middle, uh, higher than average for the standard American diet, which is in the high 20s somewhere, maybe 27 to 29, but not so high that you're hungry all of the time. A competitive bodybuilder might be living on egg whites and cucumbers and whey powder, and they're scoring 80 plus, but it's really hard to get enough calories, and you're unsustainably hungry all the time. So you really want to compromise somewhere in the middle. Below 30 is clearly too low, and that's where most Americans are at currently. And they're all gaining a pound or two a year on average and ending up, you know, 30 plus pounds overweight. On the other hand, a satiety score of 70 plus is probably going to be unsustainably high for most people, and you're just not going to be consistent, which might be fine for short periods of time, but isn't a good long-term strategy. So the goal of the Hava app is eating adequate protein while at the same time keeping your overall satiety score in an optimal range, somewhere maybe in the 50th range, for example. But for fat loss, you wanna be something slightly higher and sustainably higher than wherever you were before. Uh, when you pay attention to achieving a protein target, and staying in a satiety range, it's much easier to achieve a diet that supports optimal body composition and metabolic health. So now let's look at some practical examples of the Hava app. How about one of my favorite foods, steak? Steak might offer a really nice satiety score of 67, uh, demonstrating this great balance between adequate protein content and a reasonable energy density. In contrast to the 67 steak, let's look at a average hot dog in a bun with processed meat that dilutes protein with fat to make it cheaper to produce as well as a refined flour bun with no fiber or water and a ton of empty carbohydrate calories a hot dog in a bun scores 18. a whole roasted chicken scores a 66 which is amazing while your chicken nuggets with a ton of empty calories from breading and oil score 27. You can see how the average American diet scores in the upper 20s on the satiety scale. And you can also see how aiming for a satiety score of around 50 or higher could perhaps be a more balanced approach, allowing for weight maintenance or even fat loss without compromising on nutrient intake, thanks to protein prioritization. The Hava scoring system really helps to open people's eyes to the subtleties of the entire nutritional landscape, showing why diverse diets from vegan to carnivore can both argue for efficacy based on the satiety scores using different factors. In summary, understanding satiety per calorie and perhaps even utilizing the Hava scoring app to get a practical feel for the satiety per calorie in the foods in your food environment, this can illuminate the path towards better food choices that will effortlessly guide you towards optimal body composition and metabolic health. Now you can check all this out at hava.co or check out the Hava app and see what you think. Thanks for watching and I will catch all of you in the next video.